Now this budget I needs do my to, best. Now this budget <laughs> needs to be some juggling act. The Treasurer has vowed to assist our spiralling cost of living, at least temporarily. But he needs to have a plan, does he not, to wind back the debt as well. Holly, what's the secret recipe in this one? Well, I guess on Tuesday night we'll all find out what the recipe is that the Treasurer has put together. But we understand as a coalition government that you cannot deliver anything unless you have a strong economy and ensuring that people are in work. And when we see people going back into the workforce with lowest unemployment levels in decades, we want more of that money staying in those people's pockets. So it's ensuring that those tax cuts are delivered. It's ensuring that people, as they re-enter the workforce, particularly as we come out of COVID, that more and more of that money is staying in their pocket. And that includes things like the targeted childcare rebates that we've started to introduce around families that have more than two children in childcare and making sure that these are targeted responses. We want to ensure that these are going to the families that require the most. If you look at what Labor's wanting to do with some of their programs, they're not means tested. They're going to benefit families on more than half a million dollars. That is not going to see the benefit to the economy that we need to see as we come out of COVID and, as you say, look to reducing debt. So you're going to give us the exclusive about when the election will be called, right? It'll be either Friday or Sunday. Do we know a day? Oh, look, Chris, I have no idea. You know, I'd be lying if I said I, I, I did. I've been around politics for 20 years. I can make an educated guess, but... Uh, What's the guess? The Prime Minister knows and the Prime Minister alone knows. Well, look, it's not a secret. My guess has been May 14th for a while, but I could be completely wrong. OK, wouldn't May 14th. Wouldn't be the first time, Chris. I mean, it's unusual, but wouldn't be the first time. So, Richo, he'll call it Sunday or Friday after the budget, won't he? Mm -hmm. So, if he does that, how do you put a budget together pre-election without it being full of goodies? He's got to continue the goodie bag. I know, you know, many Conservative voters might think, hang on, where's the plan to wind back the debt? There's no plan. That's an easy answer. There's no plan to wind back debt. Debt has get, kept going up under the Liberals and it will just keep going up in this budget, actually even more, because this time you've got to an election coming on, so they'll be throwing money at you, left, right and centre. Mm. Um, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm really stunned, actually, at, at the way the Liberals have simply allowed debt to just keep going. Mm. For all the rhetoric over all the years, yeah. what happened? Labor can't manage yeah, money, Richard. Richard, remember? Let's be honest. <laughs> yeah, that's Iron right. ore prices, Labor can't commodity prices money, but look are at the higher. Lives. I think what, what, no, no, no. The Commodity thing, prices are higher. Hopeless. We're seeing yeah. interest rates down. We can still invest in the Australian economy. We can still ensure that people are getting back into work and pulling those levers. But while we've got record high commodity prices, while we've got low interest rates, we are still able to reduce debt whilst investing in the Australian economy. Does that sound about right to you, Richo? Well, that's certainly what uh, what they would like us to believe, um, and I. Well, I, 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 basic I mean, economics. The about Holly is she she is very good at this, um, entirely predictable, but very good. Puts it very well. <laughs> You're a star. You you should be promoted. There's no doubt about it. <laughs> I like it. Listen, let's move on. Labor you know, Senator... you can come on with me any time, Rich. I uh, love it. <laughs> Labor Senator Katie Gallagher has emerged from her hidey hole today, telling our own Kieran Gilbert that the term mean girls is unfortunate and it diminishes women. Holly, the truth is Kimberly Kitching felt bullied and yet the Labor leader refuses to hold an inquiry. It's sheer hypocrisy still, isn't it? Uh, look, Chris, i got to tell you, I, I arrived in Parliament House about 15 minutes ago and just walked past my neighbour, Kimberly Kitching's office, for the first time. So um, I know what Kimberly was going through and pretty much everyone in the Senate knew what Kimberly was going through. And people do have disagreements in this place, but the isolation she was experiencing, the freezing out that was occurring, the deliberate uncertainty around her pre-selection, and it was deliberate, the way that it was being handled, the fact that they would not even fund an economy flight to the UK for her to receive a global humanitarian award for her work around Magnitsky. Um, everybody knows what was going on. I don't care what you call it. You know, Mean Girls is one of the favourite movies uh, in my household and uh, I, have, I have a personal connection to that, that movie and I don't find it diminishing. It's a very big popular culture term that's quite often used 
tongue in cheek, but um, everybody knows what Kimberly was going through, and I'm in the process at the moment of writing her condolence motion. And I got to say, I'll apologise for any ugly tears in advance because yeah, you're uh, entitled. she was you're... A, a great patriot. She was a great Australian. She was a great senator. I'm going to miss her desperately, um, and she had a great contribution to make. Let's move away from whether the three women bullied her or not, Richo. Mm -hmm. Surely Anthony Albanese, having been on the attack for about 18 months about the behaviour of coalition MPs on singular complaints, surely with a degree, a number of complaints at his, at his, at his you know, access, he could have got the seven-page letter and looked at that. He could have spoken to Michael Danby. He could have got any other person to give evidence at an inquiry. You don't think it was hypocrisy? Well, um, how do I answer that? That's a, Come that's on, not Rich, easy. be honest. I, I, uh, I'm not sure that I'd, I'd term it hypocrisy, but I think it's the one time I've seen Anthony walk away when he shouldn't have. Mm. Uh, I think um, we, there should be a Labor inquiry into this Labor Party uh, treatment of uh, a senator. Uh, wouldn't matter whether it's a, a, a bloke or a or a girl, it's, it's just something that should be done. So I don't part company with Albo very often, but I do on this. There you go. We've got a concession out of Richo tonight. Um, I want to move on to, well, there's plenty of other stories. Soon to be retired Liberal MP John Alexander, your colleague Holly, has delivered a strong message today about using infrastructure projects to pork barrel. All sides do it. Mm. But the chair of the Standing Committee on Infrastructure, JA, says we need to have an independent agency setting down clear long-term goals for infrastructure projects. Holly, I don't know how that would work practically, but we did it for monetary policy. We allowed the Reserve Bank to act independent of, on government to bring down or push up interest rates. Why can't we do it with infrastructure? It's too important, isn't it? Well, I think there's a lot of danger when you start putting unelected officials mm. in charge mm. of these sorts of programs. Uh, at the moment, there is obviously has been, a, maybe not recently, but there has been in the past debate over three-year terms versus four-year terms, allowing for some more longevity when it comes to planning. Yeah. I do find it interesting that someone who's been in Parliament, and I adore JA, but has been here for 11 years, but finds uh, the voice to say this sort of thing as he's on his way out of the door. Uh, so I'm not quite sure why he wasn't making this point 10 years ago, uh, as opposed to as he's departing Parliament. Uh, but I have a very big problem with putting unelected bureaucrats uh, in charge of these sorts of things, because that is exactly what politicians have accountability for. Yeah, this is too much government control. I can see the criticism that Holly is mounting there. And you would disagree too, because at the end of the, the, the day, you vote in governments to make decisions about important issues Absolutely. like that. Absolutely. I don't, I don't want uh, bureaucrats making all the decisions. I want bureaucrats studying every option and putting all of that information before the politician and the politician makes the decision. But you don't stop the pork barrelling, though. Well, you'll never stop well, pork barrelling. Well, you don't pay a billion dollars I mean, to you stop building roads in Victoria. You can believe in fairies in the bottom Victoria. of the garden, if you like, but I don't, and yeah. I, I don't think you do. Well, pork barrelling is, is... Every country has it. Mm. I mean, where do you not see it? Mm. Uh, and so you've got to expect it. What should happen here, however, is you should try and minimise it as much as you can. Mm. Now, the, the, the best way to do that is to have a good opposition who can slam into you and, uh, and, and, and make you wake What up. about Holly's idea for a four-year term? I've always believed in a four-year term. Yeah. Three-year terms are hopeless. Hopeless. Uh, where else has them? Yeah. You know, just think about that. Where else has them? Yeah. Now, four- and five-year terms are the norm around the world, and uh, four years here would be really good. And then you, ha you, you gravitate towards longer-term infrastructure projects as well. Absolutely. It, it, it's good in every respect. Yeah. There's, I can't think of a criticism nah. of it. No, which is why some states have done that. Now, I've been fascinated by the continual sexual references towards the new South Australian Premier, Peter Malinouskis. When I say sexual, I mean his good looks and, as one writer described, his buff body. Have you noticed that, Holly, just quickly? 
Oh, I mean, Chris, Richo, obviously the three of us are subjected to these sort of comments regularly as we fall into that criteria ourselves. That wasn't I my mean... question. Have you noticed it with him? <laughs> <laughs> wasn't a bad answer, though. Look, I, it's nice. i got to say, it's nice to see the blokes having a comment made on their appearance because it happens to women day in, day out. And I've got to tell you, it's not normally complimentary. No, so, I was about to say that. Um, it's quite negative in terms of po political women in the public eye. There are more negative comments than positive comments. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, someone won't like the colour of my hair, the size of my earrings, the colour of my jacket, and will feel the need to go via my website and send me an email about that <laughs> tonight. And, I mean, it happens pretty much weekly. If who are more. these cretins who do that? I don't know. Someone sitting at home. Well, they're obviously reasonably good because they're watching Sky, but uh, they feel the need to uh, <laughs> give me a critique on my outfit. It's week none of week. their business. So, uh, but then again, my 14-year-old daughter does the same. So who am I to jump up? Yeah, and but down? he's family. He's family. <laughs> <laughs> I reckon you look terrific. There you go. There you go. God bless you, Richo. You too, my love. You look terrific and you need a promotion all in one session. Quite amazing. <laughs> Richo. Oh, God, I'm doing this show every week. <laughs> Richo, at the end of the day, though, as you pick a leader, whether it's at state level or federal level, the look, the cut of the person matters, with, even if it's subconscious. Don't you agree? Of course it matters. Have a look around Australia and tell me how many fat leaders there are. <laughs> Yes. I mean, that's why I got Buckley's. Yeah. <laughs> that's why I got Buckley's. <laughs> uh, there are no fat leaders. Yeah. None. That's true. Yeah. Think about it. There's yeah. not one. Put yeah. the fork down, Richo. <laughs> <laughs> you'll never, you'll never be able to do that. Holly, what's, this week is a very important week. It's the last week before the, the calling of an election. Um, Supposedly. How much will be decided, apart from the budget, of course, how much constructive time will be spent or is it just a parade of the farewells? Uh, look, budget's obviously a really, really important week because not only is it the government laying out the economic agenda, it also sees the opposition's reply. And we know that Anthony Albanese has never held an economic portfolio in his 25 years in Parliament. So uh, not only do we have the budget, but we also have the budget in reply. So it is a very big week mm. to get a sense of the economic platform that both parties are going to look to. Uh, so it is a big week. There will be valedictories, obviously, because uh, I'm not sure if the House of Reps is supposed to sit next week. Um, I know, we'll, you know, if we come back next week, it's for Senate estimates, so we won't be in the chamber. Uh, so any valedictories, for example, Kim Carr, tomorrow we... Uh, the Senate does not normally sit on Monday of this week, but we're sitting tomorrow for condolence motions for Kimberley. OK. Um, so... Um, those things will happen and those things are important as well. And if you look at someone like Kim Carr, not on my side of the chamber, but has contributed 30 years of his life to the Senate and really does deserve the opportunity to say farewell. So uh, there will be some of that and I think that's an important part of our democratic process as well. It's a mutual admiration society. Senator Holly Hughes, you enjoy your week, a big week ahead. Richo, thanks for coming in. Good on you, Chris.